well, good morning. We want to welcome everybody with us here this morning and via the Facebook and later on with YouTube. Uh, we're looking forward to what God's going to do this morning. We're going to start a new series on margins. And uh, it's going to be a four week, this mini series, but talking about margins. And uh, we'll find out a little bit more about that in a little bit. But before we get started, I'm going to ask Tim Hines if you would lead us in prayer and then we'll stand up and we're going to do our first song. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship and praise you today. We thank you for your watch care over our church and over the community, Father. We ask that you continue to search out souls, Father, and help us to reach the, the lost with the word, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that they may come to know you as Lord and Savior. Father, help us to be about your business each and every day. Father, we love you today, and we thank you, and we ask that your presence be with us as we come to worship and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you would please stand as we sing our first hymn, I'll Fly Away. Tonight at 6 o'clock also, our teen class will start back up. Gary will have the teens back in the teen room, so I'm uh, looking forward to getting them back into class. Next Sunday morning, you can't show up at 11 or you're going to be late because we're going to start Sunday school back next Sunday morning. <clears throat> I know Dave is excited to be teaching again. Uh, one of the things that we do need is if any of you guys can stick around a little bit after the service. We need to clean Amy's room out because you can't step foot in her room right now because we have all the chairs in there from the auditorium. So we're going to put them back in place. And then what we're going to do is we'll mark off the rooms that we can't sit in. Um, but get that room back up and running so that it's ready to go for Sunday school next Sunday morning. With that, we'll also start junior church back next Sunday morning as well since we'll have the classroom cleaned out and ready to go. Eric is going to be teaching next week. Um, but we're looking forward to getting everything back up and running the way that it was, semi the way it was. Um, the only thing we'll be lacking is our kids club on Wednesday nights, and that's going to be held off 
for the foreseeable future. So, uh, October 27th is our food giveaway. Uh, if you can help with that, please see Tim. He would be glad to give you some guidance and direction on that. And then candy donations. Trick or treat's coming up very quickly. Uh, we're going to be participating in the trick or trunk over on Main. Uh, it was really confusing. I guess they're going to allow people to trick or treat in the community as well, but they're shutting down Main Street and having it there. So we're going to participate by going over to Main Street uh, and giving candy out. So if you can donate candy, we'd greatly appreciate it. We're going to have bags with candy in it, and there will also be a gospel track. So the entire, everybody that receives candy will get the gospel in their bag of candy. So we're looking forward to what God's going to do. Even in the midst of this pandemic, uh, we're just looking at how we can serve him and to show his love to this community. So I think that's all the announcements that I have. No, ladies, ladies groups meeting on the 25th. Women on Mission, October 25th, you'll be meeting. I keep forgetting how Patty put the bulletin right after the morning service. So if you're a part of that group or would like to be a part, please stick around on the 25th. I know they'll have food because they always do. Um, ladies meet, they have to eat. So, um, I'm going to get in trouble. I can see it in Geneva's eyes. But we'll just leave it like that. But if you could be a part of that group, please stand and worship with them. All right, if you would please stand and we'll be singing our next song. Praise Him, Praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, He's our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, praise our King is in glory. Strength and honor, give to His holy name. My God, shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all and on. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, praise the Lord so high. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellence.
and your goodness to us. God, I pray this morning that we realize that we have something that other people need. And that something is you. God, I just pray that you'll be with this morning's service, that you'll guide and direct everything that's said and done. That it won't be anything of us, but it'll be all about you. We pray in Christ's name. And amen. Well, this morning we're going to start a new series. We're going to talk about margin. I have a question, though. By a show of hands, how many of you would say that you occasionally or often feel stressed? How many of you ever feel stressed? That's just part of life, isn't it? We go through, we're going through life, and we feel stressed. Why do we feel stressed? Or why do we feel like, I really wish that I had either more time for myself, I don't have any money to do what I want to do, or maybe even feel like, you know what, I just need more. We all feel like that from time to time, don't we? Especially time. You know, one of the things that I've always said is that the one commodity that we can never get more of this time. When we look and we think about how we can show people that we care about them, we can show them that we care by giving them that commodity. Well, this morning we're just going to do an overview of the next several weeks because I want to kind of give you an idea of what this series on margin is going to look like. But before we can do that, I believe that we need to come up with what is margin. Margin is the amount of available Availability beyond what is necessary. The amount available beyond what is necessary. Say, so what do you mean by that? Think about it. I walk into a store and I see something that I want for $100. And I have $120. What's my margin? $20 is my margin. You guys didn't know this was going to be a math class this morning, okay? <laughs> Candy came in, so I had to do a math question. <laughs> How about my time? How many days, or how many hours do we get in a day to do stuff? Well, you can say you have 24 hours. We can't go 24 hours. At least, I used to be able to do all-nighters and still work, but I can't do that anymore. As I'm getting older, um, that doesn't work quite as well anymore. But I look at my daily schedule. I know that I've got to work from 7 to 3 every day, Monday through Friday. But then I've got stuff that other people one of the things that I'm notorious for, and you can ask Eric about this, is people ask me to do things. Uh, I had a church a couple weeks ago. They were hooking in a sound system, and they didn't help. And they said, hey, can you help us? Well, I couldn't tell them no. So I left here, went home, dropped the kids off, grabbed something to eat on my way out the door to go help them with their sound system. Got home. By the time I got home, I was extremely tired. I may have watched two minutes of TV before I fell asleep in my chair. How much margin did I have left that day? I didn't have much at all. This series is going to be a struggle for some of us. Because one of the things that I'm going to challenge you to do is to start setting margins. You say, well, what does that look like? <clears throat> How much time do you have for you and your family? You know, one of the things that our the deacons and the, the committee that hired me told me was, we don't want you to put this before your family. I know a pastor friend of mine who, he's much older than I am, but when he first started out, he was working a full-time job, he was going to school, he had a family, and was pastoring full-time. And they were in the middle of a building project, and he was trying to do all the building stuff himself. He was laying block. He was the one thing that, and he said on my ordination council. The one thing he told me is, never do what I've done. He said I was not the parent that I should have been because I put other things ahead of my family. How guilty are we of that? Whether it be work, whether it be friends, or maybe even self. We are guilty of that. But we need those margins so that we set boundaries, so that we don't allow ourselves to be overwhelmed by stuff. The thing is, is everything bad? No. We allow good things to take over our life, can't we? You know, when I was talking about the pastor friend of mine, church and ministry is great. 
But when it becomes more important than my family or even my God, there's an issue. There's a priority list. And we're going to be looking at some priorities that we need to set in our lives so that we can set these margins. We're going to look at a very familiar passage this morning in Luke chapter 10. And we're going to start in verse 30. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that he had made, that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister was left, has left me to do work by myself? Tell her to help me. It's a very familiar passage, isn't it? Of Martha and Mary. How many times are we like Martha? We're so focused on everything around us that we're missing the point. Here we have Martha and Mary. And who's in their presence? The Savior of the world is there. The King of Kings is in their house. How many of us worry when people come to our houses? If we know that people are coming over, what do we do? Oh, I gotta get rid of the dust. I gotta get rid of the dog toys. I gotta get this cleaned up. We frantically go around our houses trying to prepare for just a normal person. Think what Martha must have thought. Who's coming to my house? The King of Kings is coming to my house. I'm gonna make sure that everything is just perfect. He's there. And what's she still doing? Oh, I forgot to do this. I got a room here. I got to take care of this. And I forgot this and I forgot that. And where's Mary? She's exactly where she needs to be. She's sitting at the Savior's feet. Church, that's a picture of what we could be today. You sit back and say, well, how can we do that? What is our purpose here as a church in our community? Is it to run programs? Is it to hand out food? Is it to be the church that we think that we should be? No. Our goal and our reason for being here is to worship our Savior and to share Him with others. Sometimes we need to stop and think about it. That's what Mar Martha done here. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do everything by myself? She's being a cattle tell, wasn't she? Everybody that's ever taught knows those students. Teacher, this, this kid is good. This is, and I do not need to be teachers at all. I enjoy working in a school. But I would not want to teach a class to save my life. Because of that. Because that's how kids are. And Christians, how many times do we act like that? Well, God, look here. I'm doing this, 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 and this. And Tim isn't doing anything. He's just sitting over there. Why is he? Wait a minute. Who am I to judge other people for what they do? I'm not. Just like Martha had no right to talk about Mary. But what do we do? We look at other people and we say, God, I'm doing all this. You're asking me to do this. Why aren't you asking them to do other things? Why aren't you wanting them to do it? Here's the thing. God may be asking them to do things. But how many times are we guilty? God asks us to do something and we say, God, that's for someone else. God, let someone else do that. We're talking about trick or treat. We're talking about food giveaway. We're talking about Sunday school and our team class starting back up. God, you know what? I'm not doing that anymore. That's someone else's job. If God calls us to do something, it isn't someone else's job. It's our job. How long does God call us to help? How long does God call us to be a part of his ministry? Until he tells us otherwise. You know, I, when I took my ordination counsel and I got ordained, one of the questions was, well, how long are you going to do this? And I said, until God tells me no. And when he tells me, I'm done. You know, Tim thought he was retiring. He tried. And then what did I do? Hey, I need you to fill in for me. I want you to do this. And he's been gracious and done a great job. We don't ever exit ministry. We are given ministry from the time we accept Christ until the end. Martha, shame on you. But Christians, shame on us for doing the same thing. It goes on. It says, Martha, Martha, 
The Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Why is it that Christ said, But few things are needed? Mary has chosen what is better. She chose what was really important that day, didn't she? She chose to be at the Savior's feet. When we walk into the church building, when we come in to worship, how many times are we like Martha rather than Mary? We're worried about everything else. We're worried about what's going to be for dinner or what's going to be for lunch. We're worried about what work's going to be like tomorrow. We're worried about what's going on at home. Or we have a whole list of things that we're worried about. What should our focus be when we're here? Should it be about tomorrow? Should it be about the things that we're going through? No. It should be about one thing and one thing only. And that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are here to worship Him. Amen. Too many times we get wrapped up in when we're singing what the person over here or over here is thinking about if we raise our hand and we say amen. We're not here to worship each other. We're here to worship Him. Mary has chosen what is better. The question this morning is, what will you choose? Will you choose what is right or good or will you choose what is better? When your margin decreases, your stress increases. When your margin decreases, your stress increases. When I look at my day, there are days that are packed. This last Thursday, I had work. Aiden had a college credit plus meeting back at school at six. I had things I needed to get ready for Sunday. It's one of those days. During the pandemic, we were serving food at the school, and we were serving food here, and, and it was a crazy 10 weeks. You can ask my kids. There was days that there was stress involved. They would, Aiden would say, uh, Ryan, don't ask that anything. It's been one of those days. I can tell. But the thing is, we all have those, don't we? Why? Sometimes it's because of our own doing. We allow that margin to decrease so small that it's putting burden on our shoulders. Think about it. How many times do we need more? We need more money. We need more possessions. We need different things. It's all about stuff. Does that decrease our margin? It does. When I'm trying to get more stuff, and I'm trying to get more of this and more of that, and I'm trying to do more for other people, and I'm trying to make everybody happy, that decreases that margin for me. So, what does that do? That puts more stress on me. Because I'm going to mess something up. And I feel that stress. So as your margin decreases, your stress increases. <clears throat> Number two, your relational intimacy decreases. The relational intimacy decreases. Can I have the same relationship with everybody in our church? Can I, I give everybody equal time, equal everything. I'm one person, I can't. Too many times we try to spread ourselves too thin, don't we? And you know who usually messes, misses our intimacy more than anything or anyone? It's God. We get so busy, we get so wrapped up, our margin decreases so much that we lose time for God. Why is it that we give God the leftovers a lot of times? God, I will give you this amount of time just because that's what I've got left. God, I'll give you this talent because, well, that's, that's all I'm going to do this time. Or God, I will give you Sunday morning, but I won't give you any other time. I may go to church once in a while, but you can't expect me there all the time. We need to watch. Because as we are putting so much on ourselves, we lose that intimacy with Him. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, very familiar verse. It says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean or learn from me, 
for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Folks, if we ever needed rest for our souls, now is that time. You look at the elections coming up, you look at our country, you look at our community even. It's not a pretty place. We need God more than ever. One of the things that we're going to talk about in this series is you. Finding time for you. Here's my challenge in this. You sit back and say, oh, we're going to have homework. Yes, you've got homework. This week, find five minutes where you do not have to be productive. It's just you time. It's you and God time. That means parents, you put your kids to the side and you focus on you. Teachers, find time for you. You sit back and say, five minutes, that's not very much. You know, one thing I quickly realized as I was going through this, five minutes is hard to find sometimes. Because that five minutes, what's my mind doing? Is thinking about everything I should be doing. But my challenge to you is to find five minutes that is just you and God time. You, you're talking to God, God talking to you, and allow Him to reveal what you need to change in your life to change that margin. Five minutes. I tried it the other day. I may have made about a minute before I started thinking about stuff here at the church that my mind started racing. Or I sit down and my phone goes off. Facebook, somebody needs something, they message me. I get a text or I get a phone call. I'm talking totally disconnect from everybody. Disconnect from everything. And really focus on you. So what are we going to be looking at? Over the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at verse Sorry, Psalm 46 10 says, He says, Be still and know that I am God. I will exalt, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Why do you think the Psalmist David wrote this? That be still and know? How hard is it for us to be still? How hard is it for us to even come and sit still in church? I'm guilty. When I'm sitting out there, there's times that I'm thinking about this, or I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at the bulletin, or we're guilty of it, aren't we? But sometimes God just wants us to sit down and be still. How can God speak to us if we're not listening? I'm notorious about asking a question, and then I just keep on talking. If I ask a question, what do I need to do? Shut up and listen. Christian, sometimes we need to Close the mouth and turn on our ears. And listen to what God wants to say to us. When we're going through those situations, those struggles, those hard times in our life, and we're asking God, well, what do I do or how do I fix this? But we never listen to the answer. Instead, we say, God, what am I going to do about this? How am I going to fix this? And then what do we do? We try to fix it ourselves. I am the world's worst at trying to fix things on my own. And a lot of times, I make it that much worse. Why? Because usually, I got myself in that spot anyway. And me trying to get out just digs the hole deeper. But if I would just give it to him, and allow him to fix the issue, allow him to fix the problem, and just be still and listen to what he wants me to do, it would all be so much easier, be so much better. Week one, which is this week, we're doing the introduction. This is just an overview of what we're going to be looking at over the next several weeks. Week two, we're going to be talking about scheduling margins. How many of us have schedules that nobody would want? Because we've got family, we've got work, we've got this sport, we've got that sport, we've got, and our list looks like, if it was on a, a white piece of paper with a calendar, or a red pen, and you're marking on a calendar, it looks like someone got shot on your calendar. Because you've scheduled yourself so much that you have no uh, nothing to do with your family or any or God. You know, one of the sad things I believe when it comes to scheduling 
Because you know what normally happens? When we get down to the end of our life and we look back, did any of that stuff really matter? You know what really matters? It's the time we spend with our kids. It's the time we spend with our family. It's the time that we spend with our God. All those things really don't matter anymore. The second week, or the week three, we're going to talk about financial margin. Mm, finances. One of the subjects your pastor hates to talk about more than anything. But you know what? We have to be good stewards of what God's given us. And too many times, we stretch ourselves very thin when it comes to finances. And then the last week, week four, we're talking about moral margin. The moral margin. Yeah, it's sad in today's society, in today's church, that you have to talk about moral margins. But there's too many margins that are being pressed when it comes to even Christians in today's society. Too many times it's hard to tell the difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. Too many times we say we're Christians, but we really don't act like we're Christians. And that's what we're going to look at, that moral margin. And making sure that we're not crossing that margin and being someplace that we don't want to be. Last thing I want to leave you with. So I'm just going to be short this morning. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. We find these words. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. The Lord will guide you sometimes, always. Here's the thing. Is God, does God want to guide you in the direction that he wants you to go? He is. He, that's his whole purpose. That's the reason he wrote the scriptures. Is so that we would have a love letter and a guidebook to how we're going to live this thing called life. Here's the thing. He can guide me. But does that mean I'm always going to follow? No. How much different would my life look if I just followed him? How much different would your life look if you just took everything that you're trying to bear on your shoulders and you're trying to accomplish and say, God, it's all yours. Here it is. I'm going to surrender to you. I'm going to allow you to do with my life what you want to do with my life. And I will just follow. One of the things that we've always wanted to do is take like a guided tour. We've, you know, we've looked at you know, the historical facilities and stuff like that. And, when I was younger, I was able to go to Washington, D.C. and was able to take a guided tour. It was great. But here's the thing. I had to pay attention to the tour guide. Christian, we need to start paying attention to our tour guide to this thing called life. We need to start paying attention to what God's trying to tell us and following his leading. Because it says that he will satisfy your wants. He'll give you everything that you want, won't he? No. He will satisfy our needs. There's too many times that we mess up this thing called needs and wants. God, I really need a new truck. No, I don't. I have a vehicle that runs. I want a new truck. I've been wanting a new truck for quite some time. But I've been very good, and I've not got one yet. Yet. <laughs> and it says, he will strengthen your frame. Here's what I look at this as. He will make you the Christian that he wants you to be. He will mold you and make you into your, your image or what you want to be. No, into his image of what he wants you to be. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fail. What's God going to do with you? I can't answer that. Only you can answer what God's going to do in your life. But here's the thing that he wants you to do. Surrender. He wants you to surrender to him. And allow him to set the margins on each side of your page called life. And you stay within those margins. And allow him to control and rule and to reign. 
this morning, the question is, will you? Will you? I can't do it for you. And here's the other thing. This is going to change from day to day. There's days that I do really good with my margins. I'm not overspent. I didn't spend too much money. I didn't overbook myself. And it's an easy day, and I allow God to do what he wants with my life. But then there's those days that we go out to eat three times in the day. We spent more money than we should have. My schedule looks like somebody got murdered on, on a piece of paper. And I'm stressed. And I'm angry. And I'm frustrated. You say, you're the pastor. You don't have this thing figured out? I wish I did. If I did, I would be the perfect pastor. And you would never have to worry about anything. I'm not the perfect pastor. I'm not the perfect Christian. But the great thing is, I'm in good company. Because I don't know anyone out there that's got this thing figured out. It's a day-by-day -day process of us living within the margins of what God has given us. Paul says, I have figured out in whatever state I am to be what? Content. We have a hard time with that thing called contentment. Why? Because it's our society. It's the world in which we live that God says, be content. We should be content. If God would take everything from us, we should be content just being one of his children. Because that would be worth it all. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise and we thank you this morning. We thank you for who you are, God. God, I just pray that this morning, as we get ready to sing a song of invitation, that you would guide and direct in everything that's said and done. God, help us to live within our margins. Help us to be the Christian that you called us to be. But more importantly, help us to realize that we are your voice. And the people need the Lord. God, we just praise and we thank you for everything. We just look forward to what you're going to do with us as a church if we just surrender to you and allow you to set our margins. We pray in Christ's name. And amen. We're going to do the last song we'll be done right before we have the message. People need the Lord. You know, this morning, people do need the Lord. The question is, will you be the vehicle by which they will see the Lord? Or are you going to be too busy to share the gospel with them? This morning, can you be of any help? Prayer, rededication, church membership, baptism. I ask that you come as we stand as we sing. People need the Lord. People need the Lord.
Dave, if you would, dismiss us. Don't forget, tonight, 6 o'clock, we're looking, we'll be looking at the book of Matthew in the New Testament, and we're going through that gospel, and we're looking at an overview of that. Dave. Oh. I got a prayer request for y'all before you close. Uh, Ryan Lawhorn, I don't know if many, many of you know him or not, but he's a little baby. Uh, pulled a crockpot over on his burner face in the hospital in Rossville. So just lift her up. It's been like second kid burn for that. Straight her every day. And uh, just a lot of pain for the baby. Just lift her up. It's one of my many cousins. You got many of them. So just pray for her. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God. Uh, Lift up this child that uh, Dave just mentioned, Lord, for your healing touch be on her and the family of life. Lord, we've been challenged today. We've been challenged to assess our lives and been challenged to do self examination this week. Lord, I pray that you be with us, Father, when it comes to that, and that we recognize things of eternal value instead of things of just temporal value, Father. Lord, just be with us in our walk with you. Let us exalt you. Let us share in you every day. These things we ask in the power of our gracious Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen.